My brothers and sisters and my beloved confreres, Christmas is once again at hand. Due to the pandemic COVID-19, although the external celebrations are controlled, the spirit of Christmas can never be dwindled. We are called once again to understand the meaning of a new life in the context of this celebration. Among all the celebrations of Christianity, the celebration of the birth of Jesus in our life is the most promising one. The picture of a manger, that of a star, the camels and the all other animals that are surrounding it, the sheep and the shepherds, and above all, the marvelous picture of a little child lying there in the manger gives hopes and new aspirations for the humanity all around. I wish each one of you the ardent blessings of the solemnity of Christmas. May Jesus bless each one of you. My brothers and sisters, on this Christmas season, I would like to communicate to you a short message on the meaning of Christmas for us in our times. For me personally, it becomes a new endeavor to understand the perspective of Christmas from two aspects. First of all, I would consider Christmas as a new language for the humanity. A language that gives life, a language that creates a language that protects and takes charge. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word that was considered to be a distant reality has become a nearby reality. A person who lives with us shares his personality with each one of us giving life to all those who encounter him. In the Sanskrit language, there is a word called Shabd. Shabd means a word or a voice. But when this Shabd becomes Vachan, it becomes something creative, something enfleshing, a means for us to understand the nearness of a new being that gives life. For me, the word that became flesh, Jesus Christ, becomes a person of creation, a new life, a new perspective in my life. There are two incidents of the languages being mentioned in the Bible. The very first one is about a language that got confused. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 11, we have this particular incident about the Babel Tower. The book of Genesis mentions, at that time, all the people in the world spoke one language and they have very few words. And they moved from the east to the rest of the world and they began to become more and more self-conscious about themselves. They decided, let us make a city and a tower in it that reaches up to the heavens. God came down to see the city and the tower. And he said, I know what they are up to. Let us confuse their language. They were never able to complete that city or the tower. The engineer does not understand the language of the contractor. The mason does not understand the language of the carpenter. Confusion all around. An unfinished city and an unfinished tower. Babel stands as a sign of language that was never understandable. There is another story of a language that was spoken at the end of the Bible. 
It's all about the language of a Galilean, Peter, a man whose identity was betrayed because of his dialect. His language was unacceptable for many. And this man stands out now before the whole humanity, as the scripture would say, people from every part of the world came together to listen to Peter and he spoke in his dialect, in his language, and they all understood it in their own tongues. A language that brings people together. A language that creates life. A language that diffuses confusion in the life of the people. Between Babel Tower and the experience of the Pentecost, there stands the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ, a new language for the humanity. My brothers and sisters, when we come together to celebrate this great solemnity of Christmas, let's always understand this new perspective of a language that is spoken by Jesus, who is the Word made flesh. In my own family, in my own relationship, do I speak a new language? Or rather put this question to yourself and answer it. Has your house become a home? Do your children understand your language? Do your parents recognize the language that you speak? Or is there a Babel experience in my own home? That's why it was a painful experience even for Jesus to communicate this new language to his own people. In the Gospels we read, Jesus asking this fundamental question to Philip. Philip, I was so long with you. Still, have you not understood me? Meaning to say, is not my language clear for you? In spite of the fact that I shared my whole life with you? Are you in the confusion of the Babel Tower? Yes, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand this new language, Jesus Christ. There is the need for an affirmative expression of our language in the context of our relationship, in the context of our family, in the context of our community life. I made this very sad experience once as I was dialoguing with one of my students. I used to see her very often very sad. One day I called her to my office and I asked, how are you? And she bluntly told me on the face, I'm not fine. She was looking very thin, very sad. And as our dialogue went further, she explained to me of one experience that she made with her authority. A bad word that was spoken by her authority. So low level and mean word, which has hurt her so badly. Even years after that, she was never able to come out of it. Your word can confuse people. Your language can be misunderstood if that not used properly in the right context. When I look back into my own life, my childhood experiences onwards, one thing that I notice is that we are missing out a particular statement in our human dialogues nowadays. And that statement is, it doesn't matter. People have forgotten to say to the other, when the other is making a mistake, it does not matter. I remember an incident mentioned by one of the famous preachers or a spiritual philosopher in Kerala, Father Bobby Joe's Katikat. He speaks of an incident that he had during the time of a retreat for the seniors. Almost all of them were about 70 years of age. And he was animating this retreat. During the time of coffee, they all came together. But unfortunately, one of the participants, a senior man of about 75 years of age, dropped the glass in his hand and the glass broke. Suddenly, there was an embarrassment all around. Everyone looked at him. At that time, this father went to him, held him firm and told him, does not matter. 
we can buy another glass. The incident got over there. But that evening, very late evening, when he was in his room at around 11 o'clock, he heard a knock at his door. He opened the door and there he saw this old man standing there with a folded hand. He asked him, Uncle, what happened? And this old man told him, Father, all through my life, I was longing to hear from someone's mouth that expression, it does not matter. For the first time, I heard it from you. I thank you. A word can make life different when it is spoken with love and affection towards the other. Yes, my brothers and sisters, affirmative words are the language of Christmas. The Christmas experience should become an experience of a new language that we speak with one another, where we give hope, strength, and nourishment to those who are listening to us. There is this beautiful incident mentioned about a little child. And I'm very sure most of the children might have heard about this incident. A naughty boy who was in the school one day came back home. And as he met his mother, he told her, my class teacher has given a letter to hand over to you. Mother got the letter from the boy and she opened the letter. As she was reading it, she was rather embarrassed. It was mentioned in the letter, your boy is unbearable in the school. He's so naughty. He does not study at all. He disturbs all others. Therefore, we have decided not to continue with him in the school. You may perhaps take up his education from home itself. As the mother completed reading the letter, she saw her son standing curiously looking at her face as to what the content of the letter is. She held the son close to herself and told him, your teachers are so taken up by your intelligence. They write that you are an extraordinary student. You perform so well. Your proficiency in language and communication is so good. Therefore, they say, since you are much above the other students in intelligence, they are no more able to teach you. Perhaps you can continue your studies at home. And you know, later, this child became one of the greatest inventors in the history of America, Thomas Alva Edison. He said that later he himself saw that letter which was written by the teacher with tears in his eyes. When the destructive language spoken by the teacher is transformed into a creative language by the mother, the life of that child was totally transformed. Is your language affirmative? Are you able to communicate a new language of sat sank? In the Gandhi language, coming together to speak truth. The old monasteries and ashrams always held sat sank, speaking truth in the community. Our dining halls should become a place where we communicate the language of love, affirmation, and truth. Yes, my brothers, my sisters, Christmas is a new language. A second aspect of Christmas, which I would like to share with you, is Christmas is an Immanuel experience. Immanuel means with us is God. To be with the other is the message of Christmas. We need to take time to go to the other, to stay with the other, to experience the other, empower the other, and give joy to the other. That is Emmanuel experience. And this experience should be transformative and challenging. We have this beautiful experience of the encounter of Jesus with Mary and Martha. Two sisters 
who were different in their life approach. Martha, very active, running about, doing everything, at the same time, not stopping to complain. She has complained about everything, about the lack of participation of her sister in the household activities, complained about things that have not happened at home. Everything has become negative. But look at Mary, like a little cat, she is sitting at the foot of the Master. This Christmas should bring us this message of to be with Him. Pandemic has made life different for us. Cities which were full of people are vacant now. There is a stillness all around. As St. Paul himself would say, most of your streets would become empty is happening in our times. Are we able to be with them and with him who are important to us? With them, my wife, my children, my father, my husband, my mother, and with him who is the author of my life. And this exactly is the reason why sometimes we find some of the elders crying out, our children have no time for us. They do not take care of us. But I would honestly ask a question back. In your own case, did you spend time with your children? You have naturally sufficient excuses to say you were running about to safeguard the future of your children, your family. But still, your children needed you that time. There is a beautiful story mentioned about a little girl. Her class teacher one day called her father to the school. As he came to the office of the class teacher, the teacher took up a paper and showed the father. It was the homework that the children were asked to do. They were told to draw the picture of their home. And this girl drew the picture of her home. As the father was looking into the picture, he told, beautiful, she has drawn the house very beautifully. She has drawn the plants around the house. She has also drawn even her little cat's picture. She has drawn the picture of the maid who is working in our house. It's a beautiful picture. What's the problem? He asked the teacher. And the teacher told, there is a problem. The problem is that she has not drawn your picture in it. Are you missing from the life of your children? Are they developing a new picture of their family with such intimacy and concern for each other? Have you given them an opportunity to be with so that they experience Emmanuel in their own lives? Yes, my brothers, my sisters, our call is to be with the other. May it be my friend, may it be my husband, may it be my wife, my children, my parents, my community member, my superior, whoever they are. Are you with them, with him, with her? I wish each one of you the blessings of this new Christmas celebration with that new language of love, an affirmative language that builds up and with that experience of being with the other. May Immanuel, the word made flesh and dwelling among us, be the strength and motivation of our life journey into the new year. I wish each of you Merry Christmas. God bless you.